What's up guys, this is Andrew, your computer science teacher for today. And in this video, we are going to solve the maximum sum sum matrix problem. So without further ado, let's take a look at the statement. We are given a two-dimensional array, which is called A, and it has m rows and m columns. The rows and the columns are indexed starting from 1. And we have to find the maximum sum sum matrix. First of all, a sum matrix is a rectangle from this matrix. Let's say, for example, a rectangle from this matrix could be this one. Starting at row 2, column 2, this is the upper left corner, and let's say ending here, the lower right corner in row 3, column 4, all right? In this example, the answer is going to be 29 because I've tried all the sum matrices and the rectangle that gives me that sum is actually this one, starting row 2, column 2 and all the way to row 4 and column 4, all right? So this is my maximum sum sum matrix. As you got used to it, we are going to start by thinking at a brute force approach. So, let's think about a brute force approach. And as I said, for this example, I took all the sub matrices by hand, computed their sums and took the maximum out of them. So, this can be an idea for a brute force approach. Now, the real question is, how many sub matrices are there in this matrix, all right? So if I have a two-dimensional array of m rows and m columns, how many rectangles are in this two-dimensional array? And the answer is pretty obvious, because a rectangle is determined by the upper left corner and the lower right corner. So how many choices do I have for the upper left corner? Obviously, every cell in this matrix can be an upper left corner. So I have n cross m, right? So here is m cross m. Then, for the lower right corner, obviously, I have every cell which is in the rectangle from this upper left corner to the cell n row and column m. Okay? So I have basically still n cross m cells. All right? So I'm going to have my upper limit is going to be m cross m squared of possible sum matrix. All right, so I can have four nested for loops for trying each sub matrix out. And for each sub matrix, obviously, I have to know its sum. And how do I do that? Well, we've actually discussed this problem, which is the partial sums on matrix problem. If you forgot about it, but you shouldn't, go check it out again. But for each sum matrix, if I know this upper left corner and the lower right corner, after I have computed my partial sums matrix, I can know the sum of all the elements in constant time, right? So, my brute force approach is going to be big O of n cross m all squared, which is a really bad complexity, but it's not so bad because actually the optimal solution, so the optimal solution is going to have time complexity of big O of m squared crossed m. Now, in order to get the optimal solution, I want you to think like this. My sub matrix, all right, my maximum sum sub matrix is basically defined by four integers. And they are, well, I have to know the row of the upper left corner and the column of the upper left corner, obviously. So I'm going to call them R1 and C1. Then I have a lower right corner. I have to know its row and its column, right? And I'm going to call those R2, C2. So basically, what we have done for the brute force approach is we made a for loop, and in each of the for loop, we basically fixed the value of all these four integers. And when knowing the value of each one of these, I basically know my sum matrix, and in L1 with partial sums, I know its sum. That is easy. But for the optimal solution, I can't fix the value of all these four, right? So I need m squared cross m. So I can fix the value of maximum three of this. But if I fix the value for three of this, I don't have any time complexity left. So I have in constant time to know the maximum sum sub area of some sub matrix, right? It's not a smart idea. 
but I can fix two of them. And I'm going to take this n squared, and I'm thinking about this. Okay, with this time complexity of n squared, which of these can I actually fix using four loops? Well, I can take obviously r1 and r2. So I can make two nested for loops. I have a for loop for r1, obviously uh, from 1 to n, okay? And I have another for loop for r2, obviously starting from r1 now and until n, okay? Now, with these four loops, I basically know now, okay, I know which is my r1, I know which is my r2, I have to find out what is the maximum sum submatrix with this R1 and this R2? So, for our example, let's say if at some step I am with R1 equals 2 and R2 equals 4, okay? So, R1 is here and R2 is here. I basically want to know now what is the submatrix that has the upper row, the upper border in row 2 and the down border, the lower border, in row 4. And now, here comes a beautiful observation. And that is that. When I fix these two rows, if I want to, let's say, try a submatrix out, find its sum, let's say, this submatrix, okay? When I take this submatrix, I know one thing. The left column is at 2 and the right column is at 4, all right? But for each column that is in the submatrix, its sum is going to be equal to all the elements between row 1 and row 2. Alright? So, after fixing row 1 and row 2, these elements are basically going to be now blocks. They are going to uh, be put together in my submatrix, right? So, if I choose to take, let's say, column 1, Obviously, in my sum, I'm going to add minus 8 plus 3 plus minus 4. If I'm going to take column 2 into my submatrix, I'm going to have this sum added to my submatrix. And for each column, I'm going to have the sum between these two rows added in my submatrix. So, the beautiful trick is that instead of two-dimensional array, after fixing these two rows, this problem becomes one-dimensional. Let's see for R1 equals 2 and R2 equals 4 what actually will happen, right? For R1 equals 2 and R2 equals 4, I am going to have a new array. And as we said, for each position, for position i, the element is going to be equal to the sum of all the elements between R1 and R2 on column i. Great. So, uh, the number of elements of the array, first of all, is going to be equal to m, the number of columns I have. So, v is going to have five elements. One, two, three, four, five. Let's assume they are even, <laughs> but they're not. And v1 is going to be column 1, sum of all the elements between r1 and r2. And that is minus 8 plus 3 minus 5 plus minus 4 minus 9, right? So here I have minus 9. Then, for this one is going to be 4. Yeah, it's 4. Then, for column 3 is going to be 15, obviously. So here I have my 15. For column 4 is going to be 10. So here I have my 10. And for column 5 is going to be minus 2. So here I have my minus 2. All right, let's take an example. If I choose a submatrix with this R1 and this R2, let's say the submatrix that gives me the maximum sum, I know this submatrix is going to have, obviously, between R1 and R2 and between the columns 2 and 4, okay? We know its sum is 29. So, between columns 2 and 4, if I go into this array, what's the sum between columns 2 and 4? Wow, it's actually 29. Let's take another example. If I take between R1 and R2, let's say if I take this sum matrix, this one, all right? What is its sum? Well, it's 3, 4, 7, 14, 8. This sum matrix has the left column in 4 and the right column in 5. All right. What is this sum? Oh, 
is actually eight. So this is why this problem became one dimensional because every sub matrix that I choose here is gonna be now a sub array in this array. So if I want to find out what is the maximum sum sub matrix with this R1 and R2, the problem now becomes which is the maximum sum sub array in this new array. And that we know that we can solve it in big O of M. And remember, we had two solutions for that. One was the greedy approach, and one was the partial sums approach. If you don't remember, go check it out right now, but you should. So now, we found another solution, which we think is going to be faster than the brute force approach. So let's analyze its time complexity. Well, what do we have here? First of all, we are making these two four nested loops for fixing R1 and R2. These two are going to give me time complexity of big O of n squared, right? Then, for each pair of these two, we are going to build the array V, okay? So, it's gonna be building V, and after building it, we are going to run the maximum sum sub array algorithm on this new array, which is, we know, linear time, right? So, this is not going to be big O of M, it's actually going to be big O of M, all right? Because the size of the array is M in our problem. So, here I have M. So, solving then the maximum sum sub array, we know this is going to take us big O of M. All right. Now, how to build the array V? Well, first of all, this array is going to have M elements. So, if I want to have a good complexity, here I have big O of n squared, here I have big O of m, so this part, the building of v, should be big O of m2. And if I have m elements, I have to compute the value of each one in constant time, in big O of 1. Well, each element looks like this. Same column and between two rows. So each element is basically a submatrix 2. So I can use my partial sums, to actually build the array V in big O of M. So our complexity is going to be definitely big O of M squared cross M. And this is the final solution, guys.